Okay, well, welcome everyone to my presentation this morning. Uh, my name is Jimmy T, and I'll be talking about how we could please the lion with a chameleon. Okay, just a little bit of outline of my presentation. Uh, we'll start by giving you a bit of the background on um, why we want to do this and then follow by introduction to the library that we'll be using for um, converting applications. And also I'll do a couple of demos and then finally just a bit of conclusion on um, why you should or you shouldn't do this and how you should do it properly. Okay, um, for those of you who just came in and you didn't actually read through the conference program. I reassure you this is a presentation about software development. It's not about zoology or animal or anything. So bear with me. Okay, so what is this talk about? This talk is about a framework that, is, um, that can be used to convert or to reuse most of the code that you have written for your iOS application um, to turn it into a Mac application, which could potentially be um, published on the Mac App Store as well. Okay, so this framework that I'm going to talk about is called Chameleon. Um, this is a project started, um, started up by these two guys from Icon Factory. So they, they are the main developer between, uh, behind Twitterific applications. So the Twitterific um, is a Twitter client on iOS and also on Mac. Okay, uh, before I go more about, uh, go on about Chameleon, I'll tell you a bit on why we should be doing this, okay? And in order to do it, let's take a look at the reader application um, as, an, as an example. Um, if you're not aware of it, reader application, uh, reader app is, uh, it's, a, it's a great app for reading RSS. So it was originally designed for your for iPhone. Um, really good user experience, um, well-designed, well-made app, um, lots of sales. And then they sort of recreated it again for um, iPad. So there is a separate app for iPad. And then recently, um, they bring it to Mac as well. So they're trying to bring the whole great experience to all the different users on different platforms. Okay, so you've got, you've got this great user experience that you've created, this great idea that you have, and um, it's logical that you want to bring it to as much people as possible. And that is the whole reason that the people behind Twitterific created this library or this platform. So Twitterific is a Twitter client, and as you would imagine, they have it running on Mac and on iPad and on iPhone as well. Okay. Um, but in order to have it on all these different platforms, you've got a problem because although iOS and Mac, they run on the same sort of foundation, they have the same kernel or the same sort of underlying operating system, iOS app are based on AppKit and that's, oh sorry, I also have a based on UI kit, which is used to create all these fantastic um, iOS UI element. Whereas on the Mac side, um, things are created using the app kit, if you're familiar with app, uh, Mac development. And these two software stack are not compatible. So the code that you write for Mac won't be um, compatible, compatible or it couldn't be ported easily to your iOS application. So, you've got your project or your code for the iPhone. And if you want to bring it on to iPad, you need to create a separate one um, for iPad. You could do it, you could combine it into a one single universal app, and I recommend you to do it for, um, for your user, easier for them. And now you're just bringing another beast into the game. So you, you got to create a separate project for your Mac as well. And how can, how can Chameleon help you with this? So um, in order to tell you how Chameleon could be used, um, I need to tell you what Chameleon is actually about. 
Uh, in theory, it's very simple. So what Chameleon has achieved is it's bringing all of these um, UI kit um, element back onto your Mac. So what they did is they basically rewritten UI UI kit for your Mac, and it's uh, it implements the exact same API as you can um, as the iOS, and it's a clean room re implementation. So they all they use is all the public classes and the public headers. So making it a Mac App Store safe library, so you could you could use it, include it as part of your uh, Mac app project, and which allow your app to be published on the Mac App Store. And there are apps on App Store currently that uses this, so I guess that's a good indication of Apple's approval. Okay, so to illustrate it, what Chameleon provides is it adds another layer on top of AppKit that allows you to, um, to use iOS UI element um, to create your Mac UI. So now you can have a truly um, universal project. And because you're trying to provide the same sort of great experience um, that you, you've done with uh, your iOS application, most of the time you'll have a lot of code that could be reused. There are a lot of common libraries, common um, code section that you would like to reuse. And you could now. And all of these different platforms will become just another target in your project. Okay, so you can create a, a target for iPhone, iPad, and Mac in this case. Okay, so you might wonder um, what is, you know, from an iOS application developer point of view, what is the typical, what does a typical Mac app look like? Let's have a investigate into um, Mac app. And so I take Twitterific as an example. So a typical, a typical Mac application has all these elements. Um, as you can see from the top left, you can, um, we have a menu bar. And then on the menu bar on the right hand side, you've also got this menu bar icon or status item um, that provides user with quick access or some kind of notification. And you have your main docu document window, which contain the sort of main content. And usually, the window will have some sort of toolbar that provides you know, quick, easy access to commonly used functions or features. And then it's also quite common for Mac application to have multiple windows. That's the main sort of difference between iOS and, and Mac. So you, you could have multiple window, and um, you don't have to drill down that much. And also, there is dock icon at the bottom that could be used to display badges and notification as well. You might want to ask, um, where, does, where is UIKit in all of these, right? Uh, where could you apply UIKit? Um, UIKit, um, those of you who have done um, UIKit before, you would probably identify these elements. So the sidebar could be um, implemented using a table view, for example as well as the timeline. And the little popover um, that shows the user profile could be implemented using the UI popover. Popover view, OK. All right. So the next question is, yeah, that's all cool. You can use UIKit in, um, in the Mac app. But how do you do it? Um, it's actually very simple. So we start by creating a. Um, NS window, which is a, win a UI window equivalent on your Mac, uh, because you, you obviously need a window for, to display your, um, your application. And all you need to do is you just need to um, include a UI kit view inside your window, inside your Mac app window. And everything from the iOS side of stuff will live um, inside this UI kit view. So UIKit view, basically, um, for all the web developers in you, it's kind of like an iframe for all the UIKit elements. Um, yeah? OK. So, um, but more importantly, what it does is, is provide a, um, it has a property called UI screen. 
because um, all of the UI kids element they expect to have um, knowledge about this uh, the screen and on the iPhone or on the iPad there is one-to-one -one relationship well there's only one screen and UI kit sort of provides the bridge that allows you know all these elements to know about its positioning and you know about the window frame and size um, yeah and bounce etc so each UI kit view will act as a screen or will act as a device if, um, if you want to think about it that way um, so all the um, UI elements inside it will think that it it is actually um, inside a device or inside a screen so yeah, the main thing is all your UI kit element will live inside UI kit view. Anything that's outside has to be, you know, app kit base. Okay, so another way to think about it, it's, it's kind of like a portal where everything from the other side lives inside it and yeah. Okay, just a little bit of um, introduction to um, the property and the main, uh, the main method that you will use in UI kit view. UI kit view has um, these two properties. So um, a, a, UI window, a UI window and a UI screen. So this is just to facilitate all the, um, the UI kit um, element within it that sort of expects these two properties from, from the parent view. And um, the main method that you use from UI kit view is you launch application <coughs> with delegate, so you pass it a uh, UI application delegate and, and there's also a, a parameter after delay so uh, in seconds. So what this does is you can basically pass um, a UI kit view and actual UI application or iOS application delegate. It would launch that application. Um, that delay basically allows you to display this little splash screen you have when you, when you start up iOS application. So that's how you use um, that's how you use um, Chameleon basically. So in order to do it, I'll give you a brief demo on how you could port an iOS application in a couple of minutes to make it run on your Mac. Okay. Okay. Let's go to your project. Okay, let me just show you here. So I've created this simple application. It's a, it's a read-only Twitter client. Um, so it searches Twitter for tweets about iOS. You can see it's pretty simple, table view, Table view cells, images, um, has got link detection. You could click on the link, open up Safari. All right, pretty, pretty simple, okay. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna port this app so that it runs on my Mac. Okay, the first thing that you need to do is, um, you obviously need to include Chameleon inside your project. Go to GitHub, Chameleon, UI kit. So you drag UI kit inside your project. Um, next, we're going to add, add a target. So go to macOS 10 application, Cocoa application. Let's name it Def Okay, so you created a new target. Um, I'm going to include the UI kit framework. So that is the, the UI kit framework provided by Chameleon, not the, the one provided by Apple. And then also a couple of library that is used by the iOS application as well. Okay. 
So once you add all that, I've also created a little icon for it. Oh, hang on. Okay. Um, right. So as you can see, adding the target created this um, new set of files in here. So if we go into the Mac application delegate, what we need to do is we need to create another IB outlet in order um, for the UI kit view. I'll make sure I include the header as well. View. And also, I need my iOS application delegate here. So, that will app delegate. Okay, so that's all set. Jump into the implementation file. Oops, make sure I synthesize it. Okay. Auto release, not repeat. Okay. And so that is the method that I talked about earlier. So you call launch application with delegate. You pass in the iOS app delegate. You give it, I'll give it three second delay. Okay, oh good. So then you go into the XIB file. In the window, I'm going to bring in a custom view. here, get rid of it, gonna make it the entire window size, actually, three twenty by four eighty. I'm going to make it so that it expands as the window grows as well, so that you know it resizes nicely. Okay, so yep, and then we link it up. Whoops, have I got it? No. Oops. Ah, oh, sorry. Yeah. Forgot to change the class to UI kit view, that must be why. Okay. Yep. So link it up properly. And if I run it, ooh, not this. If I switch it so that it builds and run. Yeah, it could take a while to build the entire UI kit. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Um, I actually forgot to include all my iOS files into my Mac project. So in my build phase, make sure you do this as well. Um, so include all the files used by your iOS app. OK. 
Okay. And while I'm at it, because I forgot to copy all the images as well. <laughs> okay. Now, if I build... There you go. That's your... Thank you. So, um, yeah, as you can see, um, it works a little bit different. You don't have to press and then scroll for the scrolling to happen. It uses the scrolling on your Mac. And it, it gives you um, some of the stuff for free as well. For example, the link. It used to open up on mobile Safari. It works. It pulls up my Chrome as my default browser, opens up the link. Whoa, free app. <laughs> OK, so yeah, there you go. So that's, that's how, as you can see, it's quite simple. All right, let's go back to X Keynote. Keynote? OK. OK, so as you can see, I've demonstrated the, the basic recipe for making a great Mac app is, you know, you create a, a Mac app with you dump it in, you dump a UI kit view, you dump all your iOS element inside it, you fix all the compile error like I did, and it's done, right? You can, you know, publish it, sell it, make tons of money. <laughs> but it's actually not that easy because um, you actually need to make a lot of changes to your code as well. It, um, Chameleon allows you to save a lot of the work by allowing you to, um, to reuse a lot of the code, but um, you, there, is, there are certain things that you can't sort of avoid. Um, and my argument is because there are you know, fundamental differences between the two OSs. Okay. So for example, like on OS X, you've got multiple windows for a typical application. Um, users have got menu bar, which provides different menu items. They could get access to features more easily than they, um, than they could on iOS. There are toolbar. Um, you can add features and functions on toolbar. And of course, you know, people don't usually touch the app when they're when they on Mac. So these are the things that you need to consider when you're building um, when you're converting your iOS application to the Mac, right? So um, in order to, to do things differently on different platforms, um, I, I'm sure some of you have already encountered this. This is something that you could do in compile time if you want to um, compile things differently um, depending on the platform. So you know, you know, you could do target OS Mac if you want to do things specific for Mac. And if you want to do things differently in your code in runtime, this is um, the way that the, the guys at Chameleon um, have recommended you, us to do is, you know, you do an if statement, and depending on the user interface idiom, you do things differently. So you can do things for iPhone, iPad, and Mac. So that should, that should be enough. OK, and in order to, do, to demonstrate that, I'll, I'll demonstrate by adding this sort of refresh features and how you, you, you should and how you could do things differently on um, different platforms. Okay. Jump back into the code. So if we go into here, um, so what I'm going to do for the iOS side is I'm going to create, go to my, sorry, I'm a bit lazy. I've got some pre-baked code here. 
So what I'm going to do for the iPhone is I'm going to create a toolbar, a bar button item. Um, basically, you could press it to refresh the tweets. But as you, as you would probably think that it doesn't make sense because you don't even have a navigation controller, you don't have a toolbar, um, toolbar item to, to add to. So what we'll be doing is, on the Mac side, we'll actually create a toolbar. All right, and in here, we'll create a toolbar item that allows it to refresh the tweet. Okay. So in here, whoa. <coughs> Thanks, mission control. Uh, Okay, give it an image, give it a name, so drag it in, oops. So that's what we'll do for Mac instead. Okay. So let me just go back into the code. And you know, these are the, the code. So basically on the iPhone, we'll, we'll create a UI bar button item that allows us to refresh the tweets. And on the Mac, we'll have the same equivalent, you know, add observer for um, doing the refresh stuff. And on here, whoa. Do the IB action to link up the button. And in here, Okay, build, make sure I link it up in here as well. Mm -hmm. Selector. Okay, and cancel. All right, I'm going to show you how it works on the iOS side. So that's it, and you can press it. New tweets comes in. Okay, and Similarly on here, you could press the button and new tweets happen. So yeah, um, that's, it's very easy for you to maintain the same sort of code base, which could be then be applied to all these different platform with you know, minor changes to the interface or how the interface interact with the code. Um, okay. Um, link it back.
Controls not working. Okay. All right. So the the thing that I um I the point that I was trying to make is you know things that work on one platform will doesn't necessarily work on the other. So when you're porting things between the two platform, it it is um important that you think about it and how you should place different controls or how you should place the can um all the different um, UI interface as well. Uh, so as you can see, the app sort of has the similar um, experience or the similar sort of interface, but there are things um, about it that are different, um, that is different, uh, that is specific to the platform, and you know, that makes it sort of conform to the to platform standard. And that is the thing that you know, Apple sort of suggests as well, is they suggest you to go the extra mile. So you're trying to provide the same great experience to your user, but then you optimize it so that it's platform specific. Okay, so I've talked about all the good things that you could do with Chameleon. Um, but actually, it's not completely awesome. So there are something that, um, that is missing in Chameleon. Um, so it is, an um, it is an open source project and you know, they are still trying to, to make progress. Um, commits are being made um, quite frequently. So no, not every UI kit element is implemented. For example, tab bar, UI switch. Um, there's a couple more classes that, that is still not completely implemented yet. Um, but if you think about it, these kind of classes or these kind of UI element, they're not implemented for a reason, because it's actually quite rare to see tab bar inside a, a, a Mac app, because you know with with a bigger screen estate, you probably don't need to switch between all the panes that often, <coughs> and you know you've got uh, keyboard shortcuts, you've got toolbar, you've got um, menu bar item that allow to allow people to switch between things easily, and um, also this is this is kind of a big thing depending on what kind of user uh, what kind of developer you are um, it currently it doesn't support loading nib file so if you create your interface using interface builder or using you know the dxib file you kind of need to recreate the entire interface in, with your code so it loads all the interface um, if you if you build your interface with code you're in luck pretty much you can you reuse you know a lot of your code, and you know accessibility is not that great. It doesn't have support, you know, for text to speech things like that. And gesture recognizer, it's still not there, um, probably because it's not much. It's not used. It's not that useful for Mac anyway at the moment. Um, yeah, the thing that you could do is you could help out. Like if you think there are things missing or things that you want to have on, in Chameleon, you could. You could fork the project on GitHub. Um, you could help them out. Make your own changes if you're not happy. It's open source, so you can grab it if you want and use it today. Um, so conclusion, um, I think it's it's a it's a worthy framework especially when you are coming from the iOS app developer point of view and you want to you know, test the water on the Mac App Store. It provides a, an easy way for you to reuse a lot of your code. Um, but I think it has this similar effect on the other way back as well. So if you are an app Mac um, developer, you want to learn a bit more on how the UI kit works and you want to learn more about how things are done on the uh, iOS um, side of stuff. This framework, although you could just you know write an I, um, iOS application, um, but you know looking through the source code of the project, it allows you to to learn. For me myself as well, to learn quite a um, a fair bit about how things work on the iOS side. I mean, it's useful for you know developers from the two camps. Okay, with that, I would like to thank you for coming here. And um, I've got my talk there on the speaker rate. And if you want to rate it, please welcome you to give me feedback and comment. 
um, give me your thoughts. And if you have any questions, um, you can ask them now. Or if you're shy, on Twitter, send me an email. Anything? Yeah. Anyone? <laughs>